Hello, my name is Cesar Pereira. I'm a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators and a board member of CIR Brazil branch. And I'll be your host for today's episode of CIR Brazil Moment. I'd like to, again, uh, like always, thank Arbitration Channel and Lauro Parente for the opportunity to have uh, 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 for, 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 for the opportunity they give uh, CIR Brazil uh, to uh, share uh, with all their audience uh, some um, interesting uh, topics about uh, dispute resolution. Uh, like our uh, previous uh, episodes, um, today we are going to uh, focus on the uh, Accelerated Route to Fellowship program. Uh, we will have in a few days in October uh, the 2022 edition of the Accelerated Route to Fellowship program uh, of the Brazil branch. And um, we, uh, oh, in, 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 uh, in the series of episodes, uh, we are discussing various aspects of, of this. Today, uh, we are very lucky to have here with us uh, a group of uh, very accomplished uh, arbitrators, uh, practitioners, scholars, uh, who have uh, recently became, become uh, CIR fellows. And, we, in the, and what we really would like to discuss with them today is uh, why it makes sense uh, for, for uh, professionals that are uh, so accomplished in their careers uh, to take the trouble, because it is a lot of work, uh, to uh, do the fellowship program and, and become fellows of CIR. Um, the big questions uh, are, uh, uh, the, the big questions we are going to discuss today, uh, uh, wh what really attracted you to CIR at this stage in your careers? And uh, what can you tell other well-established professionals about taking the fellowship program? Uh, for this, we have here with us uh, Professor Paula Costa Silva, uh, Professor Peter, Peter Sester and uh, Domingos Refinetti. And I'd like to briefly, uh, uh, in addition to thanking all of them for uh, their time today, uh, to briefly introduce each one of them before, before we start talking. So Professor Paula Costa Silva is a full professor at the Faculty of Law of the University of Lisbon, uh, where she has taught law of obligations, securities and financial markets law philosophy of law, arbitration, and civil procedure. She's fully uh, qualified, uh, she's a fully qualified lawyer before the Brazilian and Portuguese bars. She has acted as sole arbitrator, chair, and co-arbitrator in international and national arbitrations for the past 25 years. Um, she was ranked as a band one arbitrator in the chambers ranking for Europe. She's frequently appointed as legal expert in, in, in international arbitrations, and she has recently published a, a work with um, uh, which is uh, more than a thousand pages long where she uh, brings together her papers relating to arbitration that were written during the past 35 years and that she considers to be of some relevance she is uh, as i mentioned a fellow of cir like um domingos and peter uh, she joined cir last year in 2021 uh, Peter, Professor Peter Christian Sester is a dual qualified lawyer in Brazil and Germany. He also holds two PhDs, one in commercial law and the other in economics. Peter has served as tenured professor of commercial law at several German and Swiss universities. He has practiced commercial law for 14 years at the Frankfurt office of a leading UK international law firm. Uh, he originally focused on corporate finance, capital markets, Asset and Project Finance, m and and LBO. In 2017, he founded his own law uh, boutique in Rio de Janeiro. He uh, relocated to Brazil. Um, in uh, 2019, he became vice president of the leading Brazilian arbitration institution, CCBC, And he continues to teach at renowned universities in Europe and Brazil, like the New University of Lisbon, Fundação Getúlio Vargas in Rio de Janeiro. So also a fellow of CIR, and like uh, like I said, 
uh, joined CIR uh, last year in 2021. Domingos Refinetti has been practicing law since his graduation in 1976 from the University of Sao Paulo, later with an, a specialization in business administration from FGV. And uh, he was a dispute resolution partner for decades in one of the major Brazilian or uh, actually Latin American uh, law firms in one of the founding partners of another major Brazilian law firm, also as a dispute resolution partner. Uh, presently, uh, Domingos is a partner at uh, WK Advogados. Um, Domingos has been involved in arbitration and mediation for many years, uh, being part uh, to, uh, of, of the most important ar uh, uh, arbitration and mediation chambers in Brazil. Uh, with uh, special expertise in commercial, contractual, civil, and corporate matters. Uh, Domingos, uh, we, we are very lucky to have Domingos also as a fellow of CIR, and he joined us uh, also last year. So uh, th so this is a common point uh, with our interviewers, interviewees. Uh, they, all, they all have wonderful uh, established careers, and last year, they decided to take the fellowship program and become fellows of CIR. So that's basically what we would like to uh, discuss uh, with you today. Um, I, I'd like to start with Paula, uh, if, if you don't mind. Uh, Paula, you're, you're based in London and practice internationally. Uh, very luckily for us here in Brazil, you're just as active in the Brazilian academic scene in your areas of expertise. Uh, Please uh, tell us a little more about your career as an academic and arbitrator. Uh, what, what made you decide to join CIR as a fellow in 2021 after so many accomplishments? And how has your experience been so far? Thank you, Cesar. And good morning to all of you. I'm very pleased to share this opportunity with all of you, esteemed colleagues, as you know. In answering your question, uh, Cesar, I believe I have had a very regular academic career. I wasn't an amazing student. I was a very normal student in my graduation, during my graduation. After that, I, have, uh, I went through the various degrees of the career from the end of the graduation to becoming a full professor. But it was a very regular career, not an, an amazing career. Uh, my first contact with arbitration, uh, it was in 1987. So please don't make it, don't, don't go behind the calendar. Uh, it was in 1987 in my master's degree. I chose then the course of civil procedure. And uh, there was a reason for this choice. There was a very uh, recent arbitration law coming into force in Portugal. The law is from 1986. And I, I knew nothing about arbitration. And so I went there to learn everything I could with Professora Magalhães Colas. I, had, uh, all, I have always liked procedural matters because I think it is through these techniques that you must ensure the material system. And the great challenge we face in these areas uh, of knowledge is when we, uh, when we reflect on an adjudication system, you have to maximize the efficiency without a loss of fundamental procedural guarantees. And this is, uh, this is our objective. We must try to achieve some kind of Pareto equilibrium uh, or optimum, not between individuals, of course, but between all legal values and presence. Coming now to CIARB and to the fellowship. I made contact with the CIARB, as you know, Cesar, through my participation in some activities in the Brazilian branch. And I immediately perceived that everything that the CIARB proposed was very stimulating. There were, very, uh, there were many occasions for real learning, not just for learning, but for real learning. I could listen to very experienced colleagues who told us of the theoretical difficulties that their practice, practice brought them. 
And then I realized that all the meetings allowed me to know the problems that were emerging. And I would never have met them in real time if I was isolated at home studying. So that was a start of my following your activities. As to the fellowship, beyond the recognition that this title obviously means, I realized that could, I could only have this title if my practice was positively evaluated through blind peer review. And this was a determining reason for me to enroll on the program. I understand that we have to be evaluated through all our lifetime. This is the best way for us to improve our practice. And after all, what we do as arbitrators has a huge responsibility. We make decisions with direct impact on the lives of people. And we must always remember that our awards are final and binding. We cannot allow ourselves not to want to be better and better, to learn from the most experienced and to be assessed by them. As to my experience to the CR, the, the last thread of your question, which has been happening with the Brazilian branch, uh, what can I say? It's positive. It's very, very positive. Unfortunately, and because I have a slightly heavy professional life, I can't keep up with all your activities. But the ones I have been able to follow are of high standard, high intellectual scientific standard. And I always give my time for very well spent. In a word, Cesar, the experience with CIARP has been very interesting. And as far as I am concerned, it is to be carried on. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. Uh, this, is, uh, this is great Great to have your feedback uh, about that. And, uh, uh, Peter, um, you have recently published two more books, and they are only the tip of the iceberg in your long academic career, comprising uh, several countries. Uh, uh, could you tell us uh, a little more about uh, your recent work and how it connects with you uh, with becoming a fellow? Uh, do you think the growth of CIR in Brazil and Latin America um, has played a role in your decision to take the fellowship program? Well, first of all, many thanks, Cesar, for having me here today. Uh, it's a pleasure to participate, and I hope I can motivate some uh, colleagues to register for the Accelerate route to fellowship that will take place soon in Brazil. Um, well, let me make just one step back to my to the development of my career and the entrance into arbitration. Probably differently from many others, um, I rather joined uh arbitration lately in my career i was a corporate lawyer for many years corporate and uh financial markets both in in university activities academic activities teaching but also in practice and only maybe 10 15 years ago i gradually entered into arbitration it was back in 2018 when I organized an international arbitration conference in Switzerland with the great support of CAM CCBC, uh, we had basically all uh, major players um, in that conference from Brazil, but also international colleagues like Gary Bourne, for instance. And um, but we also had Peter Rees. Peter Rees um, used to be, at least as far as I remember, uh, he was sitting on the board of CIRB in London. And I heard had the first conversations with him about joining eventually uh, CIRB. But at the time, I was very busy and I had to organize my move to Brazil, make the Brazilian bar exam. And uh, so it was only during the pandemic when I found the time not only to write uh, two, actually soon 
the third book is going to be released, but also to make the the uh, CIB exam. And I was uh, uh, motivated, let's say, by three or four reasons. As you might hear, I'm not uh, originally from Brazil, neither from Portugal, but I'm I'm German. And in the German uh, legal educational system, we are trained since the very first day to a very systematical approach to to the law. And um, award writing uh, is, in my opinion, um, something that should be systematized for many reasons, for your own or the organization of your thoughts, but also for um, facilitating the execution and eventually the judicial control and also the robustness of the award in such a judicial control. And it was uh, uh, also a Brazilian judge that is a member of our group that motivated me one and a half years ago or one year ago, I think, to make. Uh, to finally make the the Excel route, which was a superb experience. So it was to systemize my thoughts when award when writing an award, which I think is the best way is to to learn that by making the accelerated route. Second, like um, Paula already mentioned, I'm also a very huge uh, advocate of lifelong learning. I think we should as lawyers always continue to be a student we cannot just rely on our past on our last 20 25 years uh, we uh, our clients the users of arbitration deserve first class um, technical skills and it is not sufficient to have passed a concourse 30 years ago or to have been a super student in the graduation I mean, you must be, you keep, must keep up your knowledge all the time. And I, I think uh, that's a, a responsibility, almost a fiduciary duty arbitrators have vis-a-vis -vis, uh, their clients. And finally, maybe not to extend myself too long, um, the Brazilian group is, I would say, very special thanks to the great initiative of our founders, especially Cesar, but also I think someone who was very important at the beginning, Claudio Finkelstein, who is also uh, someone who always inspired me with his ethics and his open-minded approach to arbitrators and new players in Brazilian arbitration. So I think uh, it was a mixture of the desire to structure my knowledge to of course, also to gain some kind of marketing tool because CIB in the last four or five years, not in all places of the world, but in many and especially in fast growing places, uh, fast growing arbitration hubs like Asia, Singapore, Africa and South America, Brazil especially, has become a really a, a seal of quality. And it's, 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 it's not only, let's say, uh, at the end of the day, our our field arbitration is also a kind of business and you have to market yourself to get appointments. So it's also a seal of quality. I'm not a, a, a marketer, as the Brazilian says, I'm very bad with that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm too often saying what I think, but uh, my my approach to marketing is rather quality. And um, so I think that's a perfect tool to for arbitrators with a similar mind setting as I think we all have here in this uh, uh, conference here today. Thank you so far. Thank you, Peter. And uh, turning to you now, uh, Domingos, uh, you, you are now and you have been a partner in some of the most important Brazilian law firms. Uh, your, <laughs> as a matter of fact, your current law firm is arguably the Brazilian champion in number of partners uh, that are also CIR fellows. And uh, we all know that the fellowship program involves challenges in hard work. 
and um, as Peter and Paula said, involves also submitting your work to being evaluated by others. And uh, what can you tell us about your experience of taking the R, the ARF, the Accelerated Routes to Fellowship, in becoming a fellow? And how does that interplay with your career? Well, uh, Cesar, <clears throat> thank you. Initially, thank you for the invitation. Uh, thanks to Canal <clears throat> Arbitraging. It's a pleasure and an honor to share this uh, interview with Paula and, and Peter. And Paula, I mean, if you did not have an amazing career, I, I don't know what I'm going to tell about my career and my poor curriculum compared to your curriculum and, and Peter's curriculum. And uh, being the last one to, to speak, it's always a difficult task because I think that you have, both of you have, um, have given fully complete explanations about the reasons that I could give for my joining the uh, CRRB in, in Brazil. Uh, and indeed, I'm very proud of having four partners of WK uh, Advogados as uh, CR uh, Fellows. Uh, it has been, uh, and it was a very challenging task for me to go through the examination, but I must tell you a very rewarding one. And uh, I would name a few very important experiences that I have had so far being a fellow of CIARB. Um, first, first of all, as you have already mentioned, the possibility to enlarge and increase my knowledge about arbitration in general, but especially about international arbitration and its peculiarities, which are innumerable and not very well uh, known uh, in Brazil, I must say. Second, the possibility to engage in a high-level relationship with uh, highly reputed international arbitrators like Peter and Paula, like yourself, uh, Cesar, <clears throat> coming from all over the world, and to continue to learn and to learn continuously with all of you, and Paula and Peter again, and Cesar and all our fellows in Brazil are an example of that. And I'm really thankful for having had this opportunity at a late stage of my, my career. Uh, as you mentioned, I started as a lawyer in, in 76. I was already a trainee in 72. So you can imagine how long it took me to be really uh, engaged in uh, arbitration, but especially in this high level of arbitration, which is proportionate to us by uh, CIARP. And uh, third, uh, the possibility to be involved in very important discussions, debates through congresses, seminars, courses, and all the issues uh, currently being held and studied uh, about arbitration, about international arbitration, about arbitrators, which is a delicate matter in Brazil as well, nowadays, as you know, and that actually affect arbitration, uh, generally speaking, mainly commercial investment, international arbitration, as we know it right now, and uh, that have very important and relevant repercussions in our domestic Brazilian arbitrations. Um, I would mention what is <clears throat> quite an issue right now <clears throat> and is being discussed abroad as well uh, about the role of the arbitrators in terms of their disclosure duties and obligations, for instance. So I think that being member of the CIRB, <clears throat> Brazilian uh, chapter, but overall, has been a wonderful uh, experience and I'm really, really pleased to have been able to, to join you. Thanks. Thank you, Domingos. Uh, I'd like to um, uh, actually uh, ask all of you uh, one question and uh, starting with Peter. Uh, and uh, if you can, if, uh, then Paula and, and Domingos, if you can comment as well. 
Uh, we, we always say that uh, when you join CIR, you become part of a very large network of 17,000 professionals in 149 countries that has been growing since 1915. And so international exposure and recognition are one of the benefits of CIR membership, especially if you practice in a country that's outside the main centers for ADR. You three have different perspectives. Uh, Paul is from, uh, from Portugal, uh, um, uh, Peter is from Germany, and now Brazil. Uh, Domingos is from Brazil, but has an international practice. So uh, how do you see from your perspective, uh, 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 the, uh, I mean, uh, how real in your per perspective is the international exchange within the CIR network? Uh, Peter, if you can start, then I will turn to Paulo and Domingos. Yeah, thank you very much. I well, I'm, I have just one, one and a half year experience at CRB, but uh, in that short time of period, I have the impression that the exchange, uh, especially between Brazil and London, our headquarter, but also to some extent, maybe a little bit lesser, but also very important still, the exchange with the North American branch, where I actually, because of the schedule, made my uh, accelerated route at the time. Uh, I couldn't do it in, in October, so I had to do it in August. That's the only reason why I choose North American branch. That um, And at the time, it was not so much relevant because it was all online. So we were anyway at home in, in our offices in, in, in Brazil. So, but I would say, uh, and we had a marvelous conference with our colleagues in London uh in i think it was in march caesar or april and uh it facilitates let's say on the one side for individuals the members uh to get engaged and to communicate with colleagues uh from uh other uh, important arbitration uh hubs but it also uh facilitates the institutional wise the possibility to demonstrate to expose to international markets uh, the advanced stage of arbitration in brazil and uh, the uh, the possibilities that um that are existing in our domestic in our uh, Latin American and Brazilian market specifically. Um, just to come back to initially to your question, um, as you might know, I've, I know, of course, I'm, I'm very proud to be German, but on, on the other hand, uh, compared to Brazil, arbitration in Germany is not so relevant as it is in Brazil. Maybe that's also one of the reasons why I came late to arbitration. And uh, especially Germany is not Germany is not an important seat in international arbitration. There are many German users, but they normally don't seat arbitration in in international arbitration much in Germany. And also Germany is not one of the most selected uh, substantive laws in international arbitration. So that is also why I basically got in touch with arbitration when I moved to Switzerland, which is a completely different story. In Brazil, as in, in, in Switzerland, we have a long standing tradition of international arbitration. Probably Geneva is certainly next to Paris and London, New York, uh, one of the four most classical seats of international arbitration. So my involvement got with arbitration, international arbitration got much stronger when I moved to Switzerland. So, and uh, having said this, why Brazil and why market anti via Brazil and there it comes it pops up that I have a, a formation as an economist each market if you want to to enter into a market you should not choose a consolidated market entering a consolidated market is almost impossible entering the Swiss arbitration market is almost impossible because it's strong but it's not growing it's not growing since a decade they all they are rather struggling to keep up with with Asian markets and London. So uh, Brazil 
is still a growing market. It grows slowed down a little bit. I think we are going now to catch up again. But compared to consolidated markets, uh, Brazil had huge opportunities. And if you want to penetrate a market, you must choose a market that is growing and not a consolidated market. So that's why I, 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 I personally think that um, market entry in international arbitration via an Asian country, via um, Brazil or another Latin American country eventually, uh, Uruguay maybe nowadays, uh, is easier and is, uh, is uh, probably has more chances uh, to succeed than, than, than trying it in Geneva, where you have a market that is consolidated since 100 years. Thank you, Peter. That's very interesting. And I, I'd like to hear uh, Paula about this before we, in, in then Domingos, before we close. Paula, please. Thank you, Cesar. I'll be, I'll be very brief. My opinion is similar to Peter's opinion. I, it's just to say, that CR gave me the opportunity to be in contact with a strong international group. And a strong international group of, of strong international arbitrators and strong international academics. We have, uh, we are, I would say, in constant contact with each other. And we come uh, from very different legal cultures. So, this is my experience with CIARP. I would never, I would never assess such a group if I wasn't a member of the CIARP. This is my view of my experience until this point with this, uh, with CIARP, with this association. It's really strong, international, coming, people coming from very different cultures where you can learn, you can exchange opinions, it's very positive, Cesar. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. It, uh, Domingos, uh, what's your take on this matter? <clears throat> yes, well, uh, Cesar, I, I indeed had a very uh, broad uh, international experience uh, being a lawyer. <clears throat> and I was uh, lucky to have been partner of one of the major Brazilian, but not only Brazilian, Latin American law firms, which enabled me to travel uh, lots of countries and, and, and to exercise, to some extent, my skills in some of their courts. Uh, but being a, an international, if I can say, uh, arbitrator, uh, it, it's a different, a totally different thing. I mean, we are a totally different animals, if you wish. And I think that coming from a country like Brazil and having had uh, experiences as mainly as a lawyer, although we may say a little bit an international lawyer, I think that it's fundamental to have the international uh, exposition that uh, CIARB provides us to us. I think there is no other way to try to be in contact with uh, all new developments, thoughts, studies, um, very clever and, and highly reputed arbitrators and professors, if you not are amongst them. And this is exactly what uh, CR provides us to us in uh, an environment which is, I, I must say, very nice and i though being a big responsibility i think that you enable us to take it lightly and to enjoy it which i think it's the most important thing for at least for me at this point of of my career being able to continue to learn to have this international exposure to be in contact with people highly intelligent and 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 knowledgeable and still have have fun <laughs> being in contact with you so it's again i mean it's 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 really a pleasure and it's something that i would invite everybody to to do uh, to try to do because it's very rewarding as i said thank you uh thank you domingos and i 
Well, this has been a wonderful conversation, and I think we all uh, leave here uh, uh, with this with this idea of lifelong learning. And uh, as as Domingo said, uh, trying to have fun while 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 you do it, right? Um, and um, so, before we close, I'd like to um, highlight that the uh, uh, registrations for the accelerated route to fellowship that will take place in Brazil in October are about to close. And so if you're interested, please uh, hurry to, uh, to register. Uh, and I'd like to invite you uh, for the next CIR Brazil uh, moment uh, episode that will take place on the 28th of, of September at the same time, 6.30 p.m. Bra Bra Brasilia time. And uh, in that episode, Tonico Monteiro da Silva, a fellow from CIR Brazil uh, branch, will interview uh, fellows uh, Cristina Santini and Andrea Palma and member Alexandre Ferrari, who are all judges, about uh, how important becoming a CIR uh, member uh, can be for a sitting or retired judge. So that will be the topic of our next episode. Thank you again. Thank, uh, I, I'd like to thank again all our, our interviewees, uh, Paula Costa Silva, Peter Sester, Domingos Refinetti, and um, see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you all. Thank you, Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. See you all.